works from that that you know and I came to realize and I think it comes with a certain level of maturity is understanding that everyone has something they're dealing with and it's okay to make that connection with others and be optimistic that's a hard thing is often when you're going through issues is you're, you're just feeling you know kind of like the winds knocked out of you right yeah. you've fallen yeah. down and you yeah. you've hit your head right. and you're startled right. and you're you're trying to figure it out but yeah it happens enough in life you go you know this is just the way it's going to be and I'm going to deal with whatever comes my way and be optimistic with it right and you actually are like good at verbalizing your thoughts about your art but you don't have to verbalize every single thing you can just like throw it into the artwork well, and, and yeah. get it out that way. Well, you know what I love about your work is you say they're flowers, but they're not prissy little flowers. They're they're really bold and really expressive and, mm -hmm. and a lot of raw emotions and layers in there. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, do you want me to start crying? And No, I'm just kidding. Um, it, we can edit that part out if you want. Well, no, but there's nothing wrong with crying. There is like, nothing. Crying's totally allowed. I cry too. Um, and I, yeah. if you want me to cry, I'll cry with you. Right. But I, I guess I don't know exactly what to say. Because I'm just like you, I'm I'm living life, and I am an art. I need to create. Mm -hmm. So I just so I don't have to write. I could write an essay about about it. I could write a song, but I, my chosen medium, I just kind of dump it into the artwork, and then it it can be painful, and I don't have to parse it out and tell everybody every single detail. I'm like, it's in there. Yeah. And I can unlock it for you a little yeah. bit. If you're in my circle of trust, I'll tell you, not not you, but like, if you're in my circle yeah. of trust, I might tell you about it, you might know about it, but otherwise, I just stuff so it in there. So I'm not in your circle no, of trust? No, I'm not saying that at all. Can I be in your circle of trust? Yeah. Okay, I, I thanks mean, for I the do, invitation. Yeah, yeah. But it allows people to like approach it at different levels, right? Like yeah, some person may yeah. just see it at this level and then yeah. this person you let in more and they get to see this. Sure. And if you sure. really trust someone, they may really, really see. Right, but it, and it's not really about whether people catch that or not because yeah. it's for me that I'm making the work mm -hmm. and I need a place to put my, my feelings and my experiences. I need somewhere to throw them. Because, yeah. because if I don't, because that's the therapy. Because if I don't, I probably won't be very a functional yeah. human. And yeah, it, it's a way of not carrying them emotionally. It's, it's expressing and, 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 and releasing that pressure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I yeah. think that's uh, what my work tries to do for me. It's one I, of the things. I think so. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I, I love your work and, and I love your work, Leslie. But uh, anyway, um, it, it's just really a, a thrill to have done this. Is there anything more we need to talk about? Leslie, do you have any questions for us? You're the moderator. Does, I know, what should I ask? Well, I like the concept that you brought up of, of the way it releases, or it sort of like lets you reform yourself, so you're sort of like not distorted by the weight of yeah, those things, yeah. by the way that those emotions sort of take over spaces inside of mm -hmm. you, and it lets you sort of move them to another place, and mm -hmm. sort of, but still keep them. Like they still get held there, it yeah, sort of memorializes yeah, sure, those experiences, sure. or those feelings. Yeah. Or those experiences you live through, so they have, you're not dismissing them, mm -hmm. you're just recreating them, like you're generating something from them. Mm -hmm. And you're making, in essence, beautiful things out of difficult things. Not mm -hmm. that they're not still powerful or have edges or, but there's an element of beauty or yeah, yeah. of sort of creation out of that. It's right. really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm embarrassed about the beauty. I think because for a long time I I looked down on artists that were just striving for beauty because I just I wanted more and I thought there's more to the picture than just beauty and Maybe I'm just getting older and I'm, I'm, okay. I'm more okay with beauty. Yeah. There's an I, interesting softness, I think, yeah. though, with age that mm -hmm. it sees beauty in a different way. It's mm -hmm. not like young beauty is very different from old beauty, right? In the same way like love is. Like you love differently when you're young than when mm -hmm. you're older. Mm -hmm. And it has a different sort of fullness to it. Yeah. A different yeah. softness. It's like more sure. merciful. It's more... And you see beauty with these other aspects, not just 
like a sicky sweet kind of beauty. Yes, it's yeah. a more deep, authentic mm. beauty. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, the imperfections that are in there and, and seeing past them or incorporating them is just part of the flavor of whatever you know you're expressing and dealing with. I mean, I, it's interesting. The one person said the work that they really connect with. Uh, it, are the the small series I've been doing mainly for myself, but uh, I love that it connects with others because the work that I think of, like you're talking about, more serious are my like larger monotypes. Mm -hmm. uh, one, you know, and and some of them deal with the same ideas of kind of being a traveler and a journeyer and and seeking spiritual solace and understanding and challenging uh, life's, you know, you know, just dealing with things, but. They're, they're a little more subtle, they're not quite so emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think the immediacy of this process and the work um, speaks to others, and that's what you're talking about, that, that kind of connecting with others. And, and I, you know, I love that people, it's, that art is a way to reach, reach out and touch people. And also, by return, I love when people write comments to me yeah. and share, how, why they bought a work. I got one on the Instagram that was, I didn't know you could do an Instagram message this long, but it was long and long and oh just gosh. talk to me about why that particular work spoke to them. So that's really mm -hmm. what is the most meaningful it, to me. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I've read people's comments and I'm like, I'm like tearing up and like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is so meaningful. So I think you, you know? need not to be embarrassed about mm -hmm. flowers. You just do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And the way that it's companioning for people, right? Like you're being with them in their mm -hmm. own experiences. Mm -hmm. From your experience, it's like the bridge between your world and their world. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think that the flowers, when you understand them, even in the ways that we use them, mm -hmm. you can see them with so much more complexity than just sort of something trite or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah traditional sure, or, sure. and I think giving them that power and articulating that power so other people see them with that same intentionality or strength or mm -hmm. range of expression they don't simplify the image mm -hmm. you know they don't reduce it to its weakest or most mm -hmm soft yeah well and then sometimes people just want something decorative <laughs> it's like and now as i get older, I'm like, that's okay right yeah. i want to put well, it on my wall and i want it to look they're, nice they're they're more than just decorative because you talked about mine and work is a little bit messy mm -hmm. but the reality is life is coloring outside those lines right yeah. things yeah. are unpredictable but yours are that way as well oh, right absolutely and so i think yeah. we share that in common that like yeah, but uh, I, I really love that life is unpredictable and that you can find beauty in that. That yeah. there are little elements of beauty scattered throughout that chaos. Mm -hmm. And I did uh, some oil paintings about that. Is, mm -hmm. is looking past to find pa patterns of beauty in people's lives that may seem chaotic and crazy, but it's there if we look at it. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the cacophony of different noises of, in their life and that, that there is beauty if we have that filter in our eyes and, and kind of see past people's flaws. Right, right. I'm just thinking about your line your lines. They're they're and I don't know that it relates to what you just said. But I just that's the thing that I'm always drawn to with your work. Mm hmm is just the line the, the delicious lines. Oh thank you. you know? I, and, line is really important to me and, yeah. and uh, I, I been drawn to lines no pun intended for a long time uh -huh. it's just the element that's the most important to me mm -hmm. I, I just love the aspect that it's something that's so immediate and honest it's, it's a flat thing making a mark on a surface but it depicts in, in our mind we illustrate a three-dimensional form mm -hmm. right and it's, mm -hmm. it's that interesting but but that's what I like about the line is it it's, it shows the integrity of the flatness of the paper right yeah it's yeah. not making any and you shouldn't yeah. no, it's, 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 it's not trying to fake anyone it's expressing you know and, too and, there's a lot of gesture and, and, and you know that mm -hmm. you did yeah. these yeah. I agree I think that's yeah. uh, you know what you my didn't work sit there for three hours and no work on one I could but it probably wouldn't be as fresh right yeah right and I just think that's really inviting. Add COVID Creating in there. COVID. Creating in COVID. Hi. One. Hi. I'm Emily Fox King. Welcome to <laughs> Creating in COVID. Live. Leslie, why don't you come in and get us rolling? I'll come in. Well, 
What am I gonna be doing? I'm moderating, helping discuss. Oh, I have to get in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm here with James Reese and Emily Fox King, and they're gonna be doing some art making today. Yeah. Some collaboration, it... some conversation. So you'll get to see a little bit of their process. They'll kind of talk about that, their feelings in making work kind of the intersections between those, so. Yeah, awesome, and Leslie will help us to keep the conversation lively as we're working mm -hmm. and collaborating on a interesting process that we share some commonalities with. And they, you can pipe in with your questions. Yeah, yeah. please do, and Leslie will let us know what, what those you questions are and we'll address them while we're working. Mm -hmm. Okay, Should great. we get started? Let's go. Can we have the camera zoom in here and we'll talk a little bit about the process. This is, um, how I start things. Can you see over there my camera person? <laughs> camera person. <laughs> so, Mari. 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 What we, what I do with some of my work, if you're familiar, is I start with a color ground, and and that's what we're going to be doing today. I just get get a squeegee and um, just move it all around, and these are the colors that uh, Emily chose, and then you, it's good to kind of mix them in different ways and just see what happens. Uh, we're both going to be drawing from flowers today. And uh, of course, Emily is an expert at that, so I'm a novice, so you'll, you'll be patient with me. And so that's <laughs> how I do that, but you can oh, that also- That looks very skilled. Well, it not took, really. It took a lot. Yeah, but you can use bigger squeegees. See, this is cool. You can, you can do all kinds of things. Anybody so, can do this. Well, yes, anyone can do this. I yeah. mean, if I can do it, that's completely <laughs> true. And there's a front and a back to the paper, so yeah. this is the front. So I'm gonna do it. No, but I, I want to just, it might be boring, but I kind of just want to make a, no. pink, a, pink, yeah. a pink rectangle. Do it. Okay, I, I'm going. And we prepared a lot of papers, so we're just showing the process and we're going to jump in and do something called, I call it a transfer ink process. Some people call it a monotype. Um, I don't, but that's just me. You don't. I, I call it a transfer ink process because it doesn't go through a press. Right. Okay. But there's a lot of ink on here, so now I need to squeegee it. I would. Okay. And then you get some fun things with the squeegee, especially if you have other colors in there, it mixes them in interesting ways. And if you don't like it, you go back over it. Wow, so I just made a solid Yeah, pink. that's a pretty nice pink. It, yeah, I just can't get enough of it. Um, now, I do want, so do you go like this? Yeah, you yeah. could clean it or use a different tool. Okay. You want me to clean I, this off? You, no, oh, I just, you, I just do... want to do a, some yellow on the bottom. Okay. Oh, this is so fun. Oh, yeah. I like that. Hot, hot yellow. Neon. Oh, yeah. Neon. I love that. See, the, the squeegee skitters and creates some interesting textures. This is really cool. Nice. So now, from now on, I'm just going to be copying you. You'll see it on my feed. You I'll know, just, I just, would be flattered if I'll that was just, the case. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in a... Because I love your work. I'll be in a James Reese phase. Awesome, and we'll probably we'll probably do a show from this experience, right? Yeah. 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 That'd okay. Be fun. All right. Okay. So, after this step, we have all these already dried, uh, and we'll be using these. I'll set this over here. Great. And if it dries the time, we'll get to it. But what I do is I create uh, plates with paper. I ink up. I like using Cranfield. I uh, use Speedball. Uh, the yeah. downside with the speed ball is that it dries. It's it's a uh, water base, and I don't like it as much. Cranfield right. is oil based, so it stays longer. For those of you that are teachers and may want to do something for your students uh, without it drying, especially here in the desert, I'd recommend using an oil based um, water soluble paint. So an oil paint that's water soluble, like Grumbacher Max, is a good one. And that's a trick. And that's a pro tip. That you make sure you want to hear that because yeah. that's years of experience. That's money. That's yeah, money. That is money. <laughs> okay, so I just ink these off and try to have a little bit variance with the viscosity. Oh, we hopefully don't get wind. And, but if and do, they're oh. not going to dry out because this ink is such quality. Yeah. It doesn't dry out. And you can see you actually don't have that much ink on that. No, it's, it's a pretty thin, and you'll see. We, we'll find out how it goes. You, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I kind of want that one. Can oh, I have that yeah? one? You can and have you can that pick one. whatever one you want. Okay. Well, let. Ooh, I like that one. Okay. And here's your paper. Okay. What we do so this is inked up. We're going to put this face down 
and draw on the back and you're gonna see we're gonna both be drawing flowers today. So I'm I'm gonna copy I'm gonna copy Emily's work, a subject matter at least. You know, I, there's yeah. no way I could copy your work, the, okay. the richness and you can so you don't want to, you just don't want to like go like this with your hands or else. Yeah, what happens, it will make an impression. Are these okay for for you viewers? Yeah. Okay. okay. Since they're not saying anything. They're, yeah. They're not, so it is, right? It's okay. fine. <laughs> I kind of need these two though. So we both they have a commonality right and double. why okay. I we talked about doing this is that she does a lot of work like this with line and, and I do too, even though we approach it a little bit differently. And we just thought it would be fun to collaborate. Yep. Um, and I've been doing all this floral imagery. I'm interested in other things as well, but I've been having a great time on a floral run. Part of the reason, not that anybody's asked, but part of the reason I really like to draw flowers lately is uh, they're a resting place for my mind. Like I don't have to think too hard and they're very forgiving. If you didn't quite get them to look like, like them, they don't complain and say, is my nose really that big? You know, they don't say anything back to you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and two, I think as a, so before I had kids, I had a, I had a, like a tighter memory and I, I feel like I took more time for thought, and now I'm a little more hair, like hurried, harried is a word. So the flowers are just like, I need, I need art making to be a break, and I'm, the subject matter is really gentle to me. If, if that, and it's, and it's, it's kind of coat, like I can hide things in it. It's coated a little bit. Yeah. Like, well, it's, I don't know. You want to talk about that? Because I really think there's a lot of interesting, forceful, forceful mark making that you do, the impasto, yeah. which is really, uh, there's a lot of energy in there. So they're not just, they're flowers, but they're flowers with a lot of power, I think. Right. Thank you for saying that. Um, I have a, like an insecurity about making flowers. Like it's too feminine or it's... so if I made flowers it would be okay, but yes. it's not for you okay. Yes, it, and if, if if you were me you'd make way more money than I do because people want to see a man Making flowers. Maybe I don't know. You're I just, kind of a big deal though, Emily Well, you, it, you, those are, I don't know if that's a true thought, but it like rolls around in my yeah. head that, that but we do have kind of stereotypes. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. there's some sort of like gender connection yeah. between. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't mean as much because women have been painting flowers for hundreds of years. Yeah. And it's an appropriate subject matter for them. <laughs> yeah. The delicacy, right? Yeah. Well, the nice thing is you can lift up and you can kind of see how the line is transferring. And I'm pretty happy with this. It. Oh, it's a little light cool. in some areas. Oh, yeah. Okay. And in my process, if you're familiar with my work, I'll go back in and print on uh, the ground or the figure to, to create some structure. Oh, okay. Maybe but we won't could... do that today. Oh, okay. You but you and I will talk about it after. Okay, because I need to get these secrets down. Well, that may cost you. I know. That's... that's... Yeah, secrets are not given freely, no, right? But no, no. Okay, NYC Morgan wants to know how long have you both been making art? Oh. Ooh. Do they want this in like decades? So I've been making art probably for about 36 years. <laughs> and you've been how alive about that many years. I, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, st I, I started my career when I was five. You oh, know? well, if I want to go back then, yeah. we don't want to go back then because right, then people know right. how old I am. It's okay. No, no, it's not. We, um, want, we want to be... <laughs> we're not giving those secrets, secrets right? away yeah, we're, either. We're breaking those stereotypes. Right. Because, right. It's usually the woman who's like, no, I want to vote yeah. my age. Right. I don't care. I'll tell people how old I am. I feel like I have to because I have gray hair. I'm not, I'm not 40 yet. And I... But anyway. Um, Kids will do that to you. And life. Yeah. This is so fun. I imagine any anybody who's watching this is jealous right now because this it it is as fun as it looks. I think it looks really fun too. And like that's the magic when you peel. Yeah. So you peel it off. One thing I like about printmaking and or printmaking approaches. This is kind of well, it's printmaking ink. Is is when you pull it out is you're responding to the. Um, 
things that you're not sure what are going to happen right. when, in, during the process it kind of evolves. Right. And so in my work, what I will do later on is I'll go back in and separate either by going light or dark in certain areas to create a figure ground relationship that's a little more dynamic. Do you, so I don't know if you all know James, but you are, I said this before, but it's just like you're super energetic <laughs> and you produce like thousands of, it's like you make 10 pieces a minute or something, you know, and can you, yeah. like why do you work like that or what? Yeah, I think there's an energy. What I like to do is work on like maybe nine to 12 pieces at the same time because there's an energy that flows and some of the things you do for one piece um, will not be appropriate for that piece, but you can pull it into another one. And so the colors, uh, the relationships, um, ideas, there's kind of a dialogue. It's like an, a crowd in there that's starting to talk. A crowd. And, well, it is, and there's yeah. it, there's an energy to it. Uh-huh. And so I, that's what I like about it. Um, oh, look at that. Oh, wait, so... I mean... Can I... Here it is. You know, it's just fun because it's a surprise. Yeah. And and actually, that's part of my process with painting. Mm -hmm. I don't plan and pre-sketch yeah. my stuff. And that actually ties too into it being a release. And I like not knowing what's going to happen. Well, and that's it, what and I like about printmaking. Yeah, that you don't have full control to make it really super tight because yeah. I used to do that, believe it or not. And it, it wasn't very satisfying yeah. is knowing how it's going to end up and working hard to make it look uh, hyper-realistic. Right. It, it's not my thing. There's not a problem with that. But um, for me, I love the happy kind of little wondrous surprises that evolve through the printing process. Yeah. yeah I'm glad you share in that. Because I want to go off the page now. Yeah. And I want a harder, so a 2H. So you, you talked about something I think is relevant to, uh, is a good metaphor for life, right? You never know what you're going to really get. And I've learned in my own personal life, and our, I think our artwork we've talked a little bit is a response to uh, unexpected events in our life and, and uh, learning to roll with the punches, so to speak. But um, that the unfolding process, the unpredictability of life and of printing align, you know, this process that you have to just kind of be dynamically reacting to what happens and unfolds. If you're not adaptable to what happens, then you're locked in this very narrow view of what your expectations are and your abilities to express that are not always there or the materials or whatever your facility with those materials are maybe not what you want them to be. But if you're able to kind of roll with what happens and make it the best you can within those limitations, then that's a good thing. Right that emerge right so I guess I'm uh, going back with what you're saying if if you're just so stuck to the the way you think it should be then you will fail so yeah I, well you limit your possibilities you do. right you do it's kind of like yeah. life right yeah. um, if things don't turn out like you think they should then <laughs> you're going to be very unhappy because right. it never does right, right? So, well and you make an interesting point that you can't undo things but you can work with them. Yeah. yeah. You can go on top of them. You can adapt them. Right. Yeah. And um, if that doesn't they're... work, you can throw it in the garbage and have the, the self, I don't know the word, but just know that it's okay and you just try again. You don't, yeah. everything doesn't hinge on one. Yeah, that's a really good point drawing. is um, there's a certain permeance of, of the black line, right? I can't erase it. It's not like pencil. Oh, right. Yeah. We can work on top of it and you can layer it and that's what I choose to do with my printing on right. top of it. But um, it's kind of is a good metaphor for life, right? You just you have to respond to what is, not what, what you were hoping. That's good. But I think you're bringing interesting parallels that I think a lot of artists feel between sort of what you learn in the process that really relates to your life and how you process events in your life. Right how you work through them. I think it kind of teaches you to approach them more gently or more flexibly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I always tell yeah. people the reason I like being an artist is because of the way it teaches me to think about life more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, really, I think it's a lens to, uh, to see the world through. And, and then when we share it with others, like we're doing here, 
it's a way to connect with others that might have similar journeys. I, I think we have a lot yeah. more similarities, even though we may not carry the same challenges and burdens in our life, or things unfold differently, we all have to, we have something we're, we're dealing with. And I, I think the arts yeah. are a good way to express that and also contemplate as a good mirror into our own lives. When you see a work of art that speaks to you, yep. is asking yourself, well, why, for example. Well, I, that reminds me of, I think Leslie, you had a question earlier about, I can't remember, making art uh, and using it, at, I guess art as, as catharsis or, or therapy, kind of which I think is a big part of that. I think that's where some, our art crosses over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, and I think there's a lot of exploration of the emotions that occurs within that right there's a lot of nuance to emotions and the different flavors and I think sometimes we're not in the busyness of our lives we don't really stop to pay attention to those specific flavors and really identify the difference between sort of like loss or grief or betrayal or mm -hmm. sadness like in in its finer form sure and sure. I think the space, the headspace, maybe when you're creating, allows more of that to sort of articulate yeah. and become more specific. Sure. And I think it really does speak to those different. I mean, you can speak to this, but as I try to explain things to my children about how to understand people and their experiences I'm like you're not gonna live their life so you won't know what it feels like to be them mm -hmm. but you will probably felt some of the same emotions so if you know what loss feels like then you think about loss when you know that person feels loss right like connect it back to the same root emotions that we share but they're just gonna come in different packages for different people but the more you can understand those I think finding it for for me it's been a big thing to find a place where my work connects with a broader audience okay you talking like a gallery or uh just well oh that's that's a different topic okay um, I didn't mean to yeah yeah no no I'm up. glad you're you're but when you're saying a different audience where, like, where like were just, you thinking I was thinking about all my friends on Instagram oh yeah that that I love I love my Instagram community because I feel like I'm in a vacuum all the time and and when you get out of school you don't have peers to show your mm -hmm. work to anymore or anyone to even talk about it yeah and I appreciate everybody on it even though nobody's ever like super critical I'm like do you, why'd you do it like that they're mostly like I love it but I still um I think it's hard to express the gratitude you feel for the support, right? Or yeah. for that companioning in yeah. the process. Well, and when people share, like, oh, this means so much to me, I... They, they mm -hmm. tell you a story about how you it happens to you, too, and you just, you are so glad that yeah. you were able to connect. And that, I, I guess, with business, so what I'm saying is, I just, I do enjoy making money with art, so you need to yeah. find a topic that... I, I found an intersection. I'm interested enough in this and mm -hmm. I still get to talk about feminism and, and make work about women's topics and mm -hmm. I'm able to find homes for my work. That's and, good. And so, that is good because you know as artists we're just going to make a, we're going to make the work whether you buy it or not. Well, And, and I like to buy art too from artists oh, I love that, it too. that I like. So. I, I just I'm just like there's nothing wrong with yeah. making money and I have one of your works mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. pretty awesome I have yours yours is hanging in my studio I really? have I have two drawings of yours oh, nice yeah what's the other one it's a nude and her head's kind of cut off from the back oh yeah I love it oh I good just, I yeah I like figurative works so yeah. do you want to hold it up or? I like this one yeah I do too nice. okay it, like not helpful because there's the creative mind that needs to be allowed to make mistakes and just make whatever feels good and then and then you you're in school to get an education so you should be able to know what yeah. what you're making and what it means cool. but I well and I think sometimes like I talk about how I feel like you have a little bit of genius subconscious 
And so as you're doing the work, it kind of understands like certain metaphors or certain things it's trying to express. But it's kind of not till you're almost done or done or after you're done. Yeah. That it all sort of comes together. Yeah, and you don't want to get in the way of that. Right. Sometimes, you have to let it unfold. Right. It's not like a process you sort of force. If you try to contrive it, you miss. You'll miss it. And, and it shows up in the work. It's amazing how it, it, it shows up if you were being fake or something. Yeah, your insincerity. I mean, that's one thing when I collect artwork is an authentic, a, a sincere thing. I, I love collecting artwork. Someone has asked me, I did a thing for Springville on Instagram. Uh, and I think you can still see it, but it was about starting your collection and someone asked oh, me yeah, how I, I collect that. my yeah. my work and it really is people that I like and their work I like and it's really about mm -hmm. their, their work really representing who they are and yeah. the, the lens that they see the world through right. and that authenticity is what really I think the world misses a lot, right? We. So do you want to talk a little bit about your imagery? Yeah. And like, then maybe that would be a good segue. So I'm doing my imagery right now. And uh, this series I've been doing called The Weight We Carry. And I have two other series going concurrently. But that's the one that seems to have resonated the most with people. Like your flowers. Yeah. Um, it, it deals with imagery uh, that I think is really un understandable by everyone. Rocks on homes and on people. And it's just uh, and balance. And for me, it's been a personal pursuit. These came from my sketchbook. Just without thinking like uh, we talked about I don't edit what I do in my sketchbook it's for me and I just put whatever yeah. but, but it, it's about how do we face difficult things and still be happy because the colors in mine are bright and and it's showing optimism in spite but, of the imagery that might seem messy. pessimistic can I say that they're, yeah you, they're messy. You can say messy they're messy and and where, where are you going that with the life connection they also show like just it's messy yeah but how come, but they're always um, balanced. Nothing's actually ever like fallen down and broken. Things are close. They're close to There's it. They're close. There's a lot of pressure. There's uh, some close calls. Yeah. And I think it would be okay even if they did fall down. Like, Maybe you're right. Well, but I don't we, think we fight. We fight to keep <laughs> going, staying balanced. Yeah. So this is more the imagery yeah. I do. I'm trying to do Emily's flowers, but you can no. see she's an expert at it and I'm a novice. So th this is more of the imagery and, and just finding equilibrium through hard challenges in yeah. our life. Yep. Yeah, I think your flowers are so much better than well, mine. Oh, so maybe I, I won't do no. any more flowers because, you know. That's the magic when you peel. Yeah, so you peel it off. One thing I like about printmaking and or printmaking approaches, this is kind of, well, it's printmaking ink, is, is when you pull it out is you're responding to the, um, Things that you're not sure what are going to happen when, in, during the process, it kind of evolves. And so in my work, what I will do later on is I'll go back in and separate either by going light or dark in certain areas to create a figure ground relationship that's a little more dynamic. Okay. WM Sun 2000 Art wants to know what material is that the top sheet made of? Oh, this, this is just paper. It, this paper is just um, copy, copy paper. paper. And I use it because it's easy and sometimes what I'll do is uh, I'll scan or print out or, or photocopy a, um, an image from my sketchbook and then I can trace it directly. And so it's easy, it's disposable, you can re-ink it until it gets so difficult to work with. But because we're using oil based, you, we could layer it all day here while we're working. Not that we're going to work all day. Well, we could. You're, you're going to have to go home eventually. Maybe. You might kick me out. But I think this is really fun too because artists typically are working alone and like I just work alone in my basement and I'm, it's cool, you, I, you don't get to create yeah. together yeah. usually. You don't get to talk about it. No. No, Same no. I, I did. And while there, Doug Himes was the printmaking teacher, one of the printmaking teachers, and he, he showed me this and he, what he did is what you do, putting the paper down yeah. and drawing on the back of the paper and then lifting it off. So you didn't have an in-between piece of paper. 
What I didn't like about that is it reverses the image and you don't have full control. And we just talked about relinquishing control mm -hmm. a little bit. So, but I'd like to be able to control the, that aspect. And so he got it from an artist by the name of Paul Clay, who, who is a Swedish artist, I think. Uh, it's K-L-E-E. -E. And he did the same for his oil paintings, but he was using oil paint, not printing ink. So that's kind of the history where this came from, uh, at least for me. It may be okay, so you're also adding pressure just with your fingers. Yeah. And you so you can do that. I'm trying to add some value where, especially with these works that I'm doing that are my imagery uh, with burdens. And this is a boat instead of a house, but I like that metaphor of uh, we're all vessels traveling through space time in the pursuit of different things. So, yeah, and I'll put my finger down to get some of that uh, shading. So you can use that. And then I'll, uh, as we talked earlier, I'll go back in here and try to uh, put either a lighter value in the background or something to, you know, going over it again in, in the, the press or transferring it by hand. WM Sun, so specifically your burden images uh -huh. are what pulls me to your work. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I found, uh, and I did them prior to COVID, but I think the pandemic has really made them more relevant and meaningful to a lot of people. So thank you for saying that. But uh, the burden images, I think that we do all have something that we learn to um, to carry and to find our balance in life. And and uh, instead of getting rid of the burdens, which often you can't, you know, we've talked about dealing with uh, people that we know that are uh, struggling with some big issues. Uh, emotional, mental, or, or addictions, uh, different issues. And those things you can't just rid yourself easily, but you need to learn how to adapt and to be able to carry those 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 burdens that are ours. And, and so I, I appreciate yeah. that comment. Okay, so you we started talking and you were in a... Uh, About ma masculine, like, yeah. that your work is so sensitive and like when i see you in person i i kind of expect you to be like some bent down hunkered down hey, you may want to move this for that camera broken anyway. oh yeah broken person and yeah. but it actually in real life you're like a mountain. because you're really emotional because yeah. i am no because, no, because my work. your work is yeah. and like well, you I'm should be able to feel that because yeah it really is um a, there's kind of a, a way of working through issues in your sketchbook and like what we said earlier is that I don't censor what I put in my sketchbook. It's just who and what I'm thinking of. Right, and if people right. don't like it, it's just too bad. It's my sketchbook. Right. And now I'm pulling work. Join us. Yes. Uh, my name's James Reese. My, uh, you can look at my website, jamesreeseart.com. Emily? Emily Fox King. My website's emilyfoxking.com. You can follow me on Instagram and I'll just like blurt out my life to you. And you can watch my art come. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and then we have Leslie. Oh yeah. I'm Leslie Graf. LeslieGraf.com. So you can you can find me there. Or Leslie Graf Art. All right, you got 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. The whole thing we hope you gather is some ideas that you might be able to incorporate, but also it's fun to collaborate. Yes. There's an energy, a dynamic synergy that spins out when you're working with people. Amen. Yeah. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes. I don't want to have the last word because, you know. <laughs> but it's interesting that, uh, you know, the, the process of life and art is about reacting to what happens. Yes. So you never know. Do what you can and don't be afraid of making mistakes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for having me. I should have yeah. said that. <laughs> you, you should. You know what? We will still film me.